Today, we're uncovering an ancient mystery that's only recently started to come into focus, the origins of Swedish genetics. For centuries, the Swedish people, their cultural icons, and even their Viking ancestors have been part of the global imagination. But what if the true story of Swedish ancestry was far more complex and surprising? Thanks to groundbreaking advancements in genetics and archaeology, scientists are now able to piece together a history that goes way beyond the Viking era, reaching back thousands of years before ships set sail for foreign lands. Imagine that each generation that lived on this land left a little trace of themselves in the genes of the people we know as Swedes today. It's as if Sweden's history has been building up, layer by layer, in the DNA of its people. But where did these genetic layers come from? Who were the first people to arrive in Sweden after the Ice Age, and how did ancient migrations, cultural exchanges, and trade routes transform their genetic makeup? These are the questions scientists are now able to answer with cutting-edge genetic tools, revealing an intricate web of influences stretching from the far corners of Europe to even Asia. But be prepared, what we're about to uncover is not your typical Viking tale. Instead, we're about to dig deep into a world of Ice Age survivors, farmers from distant lands, warriors from the steppes, and yes, Vikings, who all left their mark on Swedish DNA. We'll also explore Sweden's relationship with the indigenous Sami people and see how recent immigration has added yet another layer to this genetic mosaic. So buckle up as we journey through thousands of years of history, unraveling one of Europe's most intriguing genetic stories. By the end, you'll see that the story of Swedish ancestry is one of resilience, adaptation, and a world of unexpected connections. Let's dive in. To understand the origins of Swedish genetics, we have to go back in time, way back. Picture this, Northern Europe, around 10,000 years ago, in the shadow of the last ice age. The glaciers that once covered Sweden are finally melting, and in their wake, the first human beings begin to arrive. These are the Western hunter-gatherers, or WHG for short, a group of early Europeans who spread across the continent as the ice receded. These early Swedes lived by hunting and gathering in a harsh, cold environment. They relied on their knowledge of the land, skillfully hunting game and foraging for edible plants. The lifestyle was demanding, but it shaped their resilience and resourcefulness. Now, these Western hunter-gatherers didn't just bring survival skills with them, they also brought a unique genetic signature that we can still find in some modern Swedes today. In fact, if you look at the DNA of people from Sweden, you'll find a small but significant part that can be traced back to these very first settlers. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. Scientists believe that the Western hunter-gatherers were not isolated. They were part of a larger network of hunter-gatherer communities spread across Europe. This means that early Swedes weren't just connected to their immediate neighbors, they were part of a vast genetic and cultural tapestry that extended as far as Spain and even Russia. This genetic layer is the oldest piece of the puzzle when it comes to Swedish ancestry. So next time you think of Sweden, remember it all began with these resilient hunter-gatherers, surviving in one of Europe's most challenging environments. Their DNA forms the foundation of Swedish genetics and reminds us that, in a way, Sweden's story is also Europe's story. These early settlers may have only been one piece, but they are a vital one that shaped the very roots of Swedish identity. Fast forward a few thousand years, and a massive change is sweeping across Europe, the Neolithic Revolution. This was when agriculture started to spread, bringing with it a whole new way of life. For Sweden, this shift came around 4,000 to 5,000 years ago when a new group of people arrived, Neolithic farmers. They brought with them not only the skills for cultivating crops, but also domesticated animals and a settled lifestyle. This was a major transformation, and it would alter Swedish society forever. These early farmers came from Central Europe, and their arrival introduced new cultural practices and, of course, new genes. Where the hunter-gatherers were primarily focused on survival, these farmers were innovators. They cleared land, built more permanent structures, and created communities that could sustain larger populations. For the first time, Swedish society began to look like something we might recognize today, with villages and farmland replacing the endless wilderness of the hunter-gatherers. 
Genetically, this period is significant because it marked the first large-scale mixing of different populations in Sweden. As the farmers settled and intermarried with the descendants of the Western hunter-gatherers, a new genetic blend emerged. This combination of hunter-gatherer resilience and farmer innovation would become the backbone of Sweden's early society. In a way, these Neolithic farmers laid down a second layer of Swedish ancestry, one that brought new skills, ideas, and genes from regions further south. This blending of cultures and genetics is a pattern we'll see time and again in Swedish history. The arrival of these early farmers is a reminder that Swedish heritage has always been about adapting to new ideas and influences, even as far back as 5,000 years ago. Now, we come to one of the most intriguing chapters in Swedish genetic history, the Indo-European migration. Around 2800 BCE, another wave of people began moving into Europe from the Eurasian steppes. Known as the Amnea, these people are considered the ancestors of the Indo-European language family, which includes everything from Hindi to English and, of course, Swedish. But the Yamnaya didn't just bring a new language, they brought a whole new set of genes, and their arrival had a huge impact on Swedish ancestry. The Yamnaya people were skilled horse riders, warriors, and pastoralists. They brought a nomadic lifestyle, focused on cattle and horses, that allowed them to move across vast distances. Their influence spread rapidly, and as they migrated, they mixed with the Neolithic farmers and hunter-gatherers already in Europe. In Sweden, their arrival left a significant genetic imprint, particularly among traits related to height and certain aspects of facial structure. What's truly fascinating is how this Yamnea influence brought Sweden into a broader European cultural and genetic network. They're considered a major reason why Swedish and other Germanic languages are part of the larger Indo-European family. Without the Amnea migration, it's possible that Swedish culture, and even the Swedish language, might look very different today. This layer of ancestry reminds us that Sweden wasn't isolated, it was part of a vast and interconnected world. The Amnea migration was one of those pivotal moments that would influence Swedish culture, language, and genetics for centuries to come. So while the Yamnea may have been a distant part of Sweden's past, their influence is still with us in ways we often don't realize. Now, we've arrived at the most iconic chapter in Swedish history, the Viking era. The word Viking immediately brings to mind images of fearless seafarers and explorers, and this era, from roughly the 8th to the 11th centuries, was indeed a time of remarkable expansion. But beyond their adventurous spirit, the Vikings played a pivotal role in shaping Swedish genetics, not just within Scandinavia, but across Europe and even beyond. During this time, Swedish Vikings set out on journeys that would take them from the British Isles to the coasts of the Mediterranean, and even as far east as the rivers of Russia. These voyages weren't just about conquest, they were about trade, settlement, and exchange. Through these extensive travels, the Vikings came into contact with a multitude of different cultures, from the Slavic peoples of Eastern Europe to the Byzantine Empire and beyond. Each of these interactions brought new influences, both cultural and genetic, back to Sweden. Genetic studies on Viking remains have shown that they were a genetically diverse group, absorbing genes from the populations they encountered. This period of exploration meant that people from far-reaching places began to contribute to the Swedish gene pool. Swedes today can trace some of their ancestry to these interactions, reflecting the mixed nature of the Viking genetic legacy. It's a fascinating reminder that the Viking identity wasn't a purely Swedish or Nordic phenomenon, it was something shaped by the diverse cultures they encountered and incorporated. So, while we often think of Vikings as fierce warriors, they were also connectors, building a network that linked Sweden to a much larger world. They weren't just spreading their influence, they were also bringing pieces of other cultures and people back with them. This genetic exchange, along with the Vikings' adventurous spirit, remains an essential part of Swedish heritage. It's no wonder that the Viking legacy continues to captivate the world. It represents a chapter of constant exploration, adaptation, and change, all written into the genetic code of modern Swedes. While the Vikings were voyaging abroad, a unique group of people were living much closer to home, the Sami people. The Sami are the indigenous people of Scandinavia, with a culture and genetic heritage that predates even the arrival of the Western hunter-gatherers. 
The Sami have lived in the northern reaches of Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Russia for thousands of years, and their distinct way of life and genetic markers have become an integral part of Sweden's heritage. The Sami are particularly known for their deep connection to the land. Traditionally, they are reindeer herders, hunters, and fishermen, and they have a close-knit, community-centered society that's uniquely adapted to life in the Arctic. Their genetics, too, reflect this adaptation. The Sami have a distinct genetic profile, with markers that differ significantly from other Scandinavian populations. This genetic difference is thought to be due to both geographic isolation and a long-standing cultural identity that the Sami have fiercely preserved over centuries. One of the most fascinating aspects of Swedish genetics is how the Sami have coexisted with other groups in Sweden. Despite their differences, the Sami have contributed to the overall genetic diversity of Sweden, especially in the northern regions. Today, you can still see this Sami influence in the genetics of many Swedes, showing just how interconnected these two groups have been over time. The story of the Sami people is essential to understanding Swedish genetics because it adds depth to the idea of what it means to be Swedish. The Sami remind us that Sweden is home to multiple heritages, each with its own history and genetic footprint. They are a living symbol of cultural and genetic resilience, showing that Sweden's story isn't just one of arrival and migration, but also of continuity and adaptation. This Sami influence remains an irreplaceable layer in the complex mosaic of Swedish identity. As we dig deeper into Swedish genetics, one thing becomes clear, Sweden has always been connected to a larger European family. Due to centuries of migration, trade, and cultural exchange, Swedes share substantial genetic similarities with their neighbors, especially Denmark, Norway, and Finland. In fact, genetic studies show that Swedes, Danes, and Norwegians are some of the most closely related populations in Europe. But these connections aren't limited to just Scandinavia, they stretch across the continent. Much of this connection comes from shared histories. For example, during the Viking era, as we discussed, Swedes not only traveled to neighboring lands, but also formed close ties with groups from as far away as Britain, Ireland, and even parts of Central and Eastern Europe. Additionally, Sweden's history of alliances, wars, and political unions, such as the Kalmar Union with Denmark and Norway, created a continuous flow of people and ideas that bound these nations together. However, Sweden's genetic ties go even further back to the migrations we've already mentioned, the Yamnea from the Eurasian steppes, the Neolithic farmers from Central Europe, and the Western hunter-gatherers who spread across Europe after the Ice Age. Each of these groups left traces that are still visible in Swedish genetics today. What's truly fascinating is that these genetic markers tie Sweden to a larger European network, illustrating just how interconnected the continent has been for thousands of years. In the end, Sweden's genetic heritage is a testament to its place within Europe. While Swedish culture has its unique elements, its genetic history shows that Sweden has always been part of something bigger. From ancient migrations to modern connections, Swedish genetics reveal a story of shared ancestry, reflecting a broader European identity that stretches back through time. Sweden may stand out as a distinct culture, but its roots run deep into the European soil, showing that, in many ways, Sweden is Europe, and Europe is Sweden. The story of Swedish genetics doesn't end with ancient migrations or Viking voyages. In fact, one of the most exciting chapters is unfolding right now, thanks to modern globalization and migration. Over the past century, Sweden has experienced waves of migration from across Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Africa, each adding new layers to the country's genetic tapestry. This modern migration is creating a more diverse Sweden, bringing in new genetic influences that would have been unimaginable just a few generations ago. Take, for example, the 20th century, when Sweden began accepting refugees and immigrants from various parts of the world. From neighboring countries like Finland to distant ones like Iraq and Somalia, people from all backgrounds have come to call Sweden home. Each new arrival brought their own unique genetic markers, enriching the Swedish gene pool and creating a more diverse population. This isn't just about statistics, it's a profound change that's reshaping what it means to be Swedish in the modern world. Today, the impact of this global migration is visible in Swedish society. 
it's in the languages spoken on the streets, the foods and grocery stores, and even the genetic studies showing a much wider range of genetic diversity than at any previous point in Swedish history. For modern Swedes, this diversity represents both a connection to their ancestral roots and a bridge to a more global future. So, when we talk about Swedish genetics today, we're not just talking about Vikings, Neolithic farmers, or Ice Age hunters. We're talking about a living, evolving heritage that reflects the world we live in now. Each new generation of Swedes carries within them the story of migrations from thousands of years ago and from just a few years ago. It's a reminder that Swedish identity has always been a blend of different influences, and today, that blend is more vibrant than ever. Swedish genetics have come full circle, from the ancient world to the modern one, showing us that the story of Sweden is a story of endless adaptation, diversity, and change. As we wrap up this journey through Swedish genetics, let's address some common myths and unexpected findings that have emerged from recent research. One of the biggest misconceptions about Swedish ancestry is that it's primarily Viking in origin. While Vikings certainly left a mark, we now know that they're only one part of a much bigger story. In fact, the idea of a purely Viking ancestry doesn't capture the full depth and diversity of Swedish heritage. For instance, genetic studies show that many Swedes have a strong link to early European hunter-gatherers and Neolithic farmers, groups that predate the Vikings by thousands of years. Moreover, the influence of migrations like the Amnea and connections with the Sami people challenge the notion of a single, unified Swedish identity. Instead, Swedish ancestry is a mosaic of various cultures, each contributing their own unique piece to the genetic puzzle. Another fascinating discovery is how recent migration has reshaped Swedish genetics. Today's Swedes may have ancestry from countries that Viking explorers never even dreamed of reaching. These modern genetic layers prove that Sweden's history isn't something frozen in the past. It's a living, breathing legacy that's still evolving. In the end, these discoveries remind us that Swedish identity is more than a set of myths or stereotypes. It's a complex, evolving story of people coming together, adapting, and creating something new. Swedish genetics, with all its diversity and unexpected twists, paints a beautiful picture of resilience and interconnectedness. So, next time you think of Sweden, remember that its history is far richer and more intricate than we ever imagined. The true story of Swedish ancestry is one of openness, diversity, and an unbreakable connection to the wider world.